Hey guys, I am here in my bedroom actually, in front of my lush green wall. I actually just swapped out a few plants because two were suffering from root rot because they got a little bit too wet. They got, um, they were kind of sitting in between the semi-permeable layer and they were sitting a little bit too much into water. And, um, and I have to change out a couple more plants that are getting a little bit too long. Some of my aglaonema in here are getting a little bit caney, but that's besides the point. I just wanted to give you reference to where I am in my house, but I wanted to do a recap because we have officially finished 365 days of plants, that big project <laughs> that you probably saw um, us do on YouTube and also on Instagram at Homestead Brooklyn. Now, I wanna just give a recap of what 365 days of plants is because I'm always shocked. There's just more people, new people, always coming onto the channel and just discovering the channel. They're just discovering their plant love. They come upon the channel and they might not know exactly everything and what the channel is about. Well, one of the projects that we did is 365 days of plants where I covered one plant a day for a whole year. And it was just really top level information. I mean, information that I could just really draw from, from memory. Um, but most important information is just like, how am I actually growing this plant? And yes, it's a plant that I have in my home. How am I growing pl uh, this plant in my home? What type of fertilizer am I using? Um, when is the growing season? What type of potting medium? What type of light am I giving it? And then also a little bit more information about the plant, like the scientific name, where maybe it's native to. And, uh, and I published that here on YouTube. So now it's in a playlist called 365 Days of Plants. So it is there for your reference. Or you could go on my Instagram at Homestead Brooklyn and they're more like vertical framing and you could find that. But I think it's a little bit easier to actually find it here on, on YouTube, especially if you're searching for things. Um, but anyway, there's so much, <laughs> there's so much that I actually learned from this process because this was the first time that I'm actually creating um, I would say like higher quality content uh, one day at a time. So it's not just like me with my iPhone, you know, it was a little bit more of a sophisticated setup. I know a lot of people asked about like what the setup looked like. And my first video of introducing 365 days of plants is up on YouTube. So you'd have to go back to video number one of me doing 365 days of plants. And I have a little bit more about the uh, setup with my remote controls and how I turned on two camera frames and filmed that whole process. But there's a lot that I learned. Um, you know, first of all, there are some mistakes that I've made uh, in the sense that I had one plant I could think of off the top of my head. I thought it was a uh, Raffidophora de, uh, de Cursiva. And because I just got a stem, I got a stem from a, a grower in Thailand and that's what they said it was. And it grew out to be an Epiprenum pinnatum, which is such a bummer. And uh, so I went back to my friend Mick and he confirmed it was an Epiprenum pinnatum, um, which I had already covered on 365 Days of Plants. And there were a few plants in there that um, I couldn't remember off the top of my head of where the plant was originally from. Um, so I think African violet, <laughs> I said, even though it's been introduced to Trinidad and Tobago, I was like, oh, it's from Trinidad and Tobago, but it's an African violet. And sometimes you can't go on the name alone of, uh, of the common name alone of where, where plants are from. But in that case, African violet is native to, uh, to countries in Africa. I think it's Tanzania. Off the top of my head, I can't remember. But, you know, these were some of the, the challenges that I ran into, not only just filming, um, you know, a, a lot so you could get one per day, um, but also just trying to recall some information and it's really high level basic information. So what I tried to cover is yes, how I'm growing this plant in my home, which is easy for me to remember because I have a relationship with this plant and I know how I'm growing it in my home. I know if it's in my Southwest window or under a grow light or in my Northeast window. Um, you know, how much I fertilize, or fertilize it, what I fertilize it with, how often, maybe the potting medium, things like that. And, um, but some of the more challenging things was, is like, you know, is this the most up-to-date scientific name? Sometimes that wasn't the case. And, uh, and is this a uh, plant, you know, native to a specific environment um, or microclimate, things like that. But all in all, it's done, it's over. And, um, and it should be, I think, uh, a really good resource for people to turn to. And what I would like to also say, especially for all the, the newbies coming into the channel, is if you happen to go upon 
um, one of the episodes of 365 Days of Plants, you could also take a look at the comments because what I've tried to do with these is to create a platform where people could actually share how they're growing maybe that specific species of plant in their home and in their environment. And as we all know, it could be challenging to grow one plant that I might find easy here, and it might be challenging to grow in a more subtropical or tropical climate, for instance, and vice versa. So uh, getting that amount of information and not just taking my word as gospel, but just as a, a data point, um, is, is I think is gonna be very useful. So take a look at some of the comments. There's a lot of wonderful green thumbers out there who watch the channel and, and there's many people who actually provide really great advice beyond my advice or my information in 365 Days of Plants. So I know many of you <laughs> were a little bit bummed that 365 Days of Plants had to come to an end, but I have to say, I am so, so, so relieved because it is a bit of weightlessness now because I've, I feel like I you know, stuck a fork in it, it's done, um, and I can move on to another project. And as I think that you all know, we kind of go in and out of these phases where you get excited for an idea and you wanna go out and you do it and you get it done and that's really great. But then we kind of switch to different modes and you know, when I um, had to take a break from my YouTube channel to write my book, How to Make a Plant Love You, I was switching to a different mode, you know, a much more con uh, contemplative, much more thoughtful, introspective, retrospective um, mode. And, and I like that. I like that we are not always, we don't have to always be full on or always interested in going in front of the camera type of feel. Um, I think that's what makes us individual and unique and, and human. So, uh, so I accept that and I embrace that. And there are times when I definitely don't wanna get on camera and, um, and I wanna be a little bit more insular. And I think that I'm going in and out of those phases. And I mean, and especially now with the sheltering in. Um, but otherwise I'm excited that 365 is done. Um, what's next? Um, I mean, I did like the regiment and the structure and the, uh, of 365 days of plants. So I might actually do some of those things again. Um, maybe not for a whole year, <laughs> but maybe for like, you know, 10 days at a time or 30 days at a time. Um, yeah, so I can't tell you exactly what's going to be next. Um, I am writing a little bit more right now, so I'm feeling a bit more inspired to, to do something maybe that way, um, but nothing solid yet that I could share with you. And I'm doing a little bit more outdoor gardening, although I have to tell you, I'm a little bit bummed. In fact, I think this is like total BS, but the garden manager and executive committee at our, uh, at our uh, garden wants to close our community garden off to the gardeners. So most community gardens by executive order have to be closed to the public, but they don't have to be closed to the gardeners. So the executive committee and the garden manager has to make the determination as to whether to close the garden to the gardeners. And usually they do do that because some of the community gardens here are like really tiny and very thin and it's really hard to socially distance. But that's not the case for our garden. It's about a quarter acre. Uh, it's really large, it's very spacious, and there's lots of little corners and places for people to sit and kind of like stay away or socially distance from one another. Um, but they're deciding to close it anyway. So I've been kind of trying to get in there, you know, in the last remaining hours that I can in order to be able to do some critical planting because we're going to be moving into the summer season and that is not a good time to plant in the Northeast or in most places. So uh, most of the planting that you wanna get done is in the spring and the fall. So I'm trying to get as much as my planting in right there as possible. And there's a lot of interesting things. There's a lot of interesting projects that I have at the community garden because I try to keep on top of the rain garden that we planted and there's a shade garden in the back. And then of course I have my community plot, which I just refurbished with a new garden bed because that one had to be taken out. And, um, and my community bed is about, I would say 20% planted. 
And the reason why it's 20% planted is that I planted a, a bunch of perennials last year and some of those have come back, obviously. So, I mean, almost all of those have come back. So, um, so yeah, so I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just kind of like in this like random space of, uh, of finally finished with 365 days of plants. Um, I'm not doing much filming for Plant One On Me, um, but I, I think I will be doing a house tour because I think what will be nice about the house tour is you being able to identify some of those plants in 365 days of plants and seeing them in and around the house, which I think will be fun. And I think the last time I did a house tour was like last year. So, uh, so that should be fun. But otherwise, I'd love to hear from you, like your thoughts. Uh, what did you think of 365 days of plants? Did you enjoy it? Um, if you have any other ideas of things that you'd like to see me do, I can't promise that I will do them. <laughs> not a puppet, not a plant puppet. Um, but I, I'd love your ideas and regardless. And if it's something that I can do that I feel like it's not going to be too um, arduous over the course of time, I, I never like to to push myself to the point that it will feel um, monotonous and um, and that I would fall out of love of something because that would be the last thing I want to do. I really love plants. I really love sharing it with you, and I want to be able to keep that tempo. And um, and I don't want to do what a, what a lot of uh, YouTubers you know fear is just burnout. Uh, it's gotta it's gotta remain within human scale. It's gotta remain fun and exciting. Um, oh, and of course, if you stayed this long in this video, uh, thank you, firstly. And secondly, we are actually nominated for two Webby Awards, which is amazing. We are up against folks like the BBC and National Geographic and Vox and Skillshare and Apartment Therapy and all these bigger media folks. And then we have this little tiny Homestead Brooklyn plant one on me. <laughs> who has been nominated for two Webby Awards in the How To and the DIY and also Travel and Adventure. So in the How To, our first houseplant home makeover featuring Damon uh, made it into the competition. And also the Rare Plant Survey where we hike to the top of Tiger's Nose in Thailand uh, in memory of Shanine uh, who actually passed away on that trip he was an incredible botanist in Thailand, and if you haven't seen that video, please watch it. It is just so beautiful, and I think is so metaphoric. Uh, we were looking at a lot of rare plants that may not exist, you know, even five, ten years from now because of climate change. And um, and of course, you know, as we find out, and I don't want to have the spoiler if you haven't watched it, but um, one of our uh, uh, dear friends actually passed on that trip. So. That is in Travel and Adventure, and we would love your support, and we would love your vote there because every vote counts, and it's the People's Choice Awards uh, for the Webby Awards, which is like the Oscars of the internet, so it's a, it's a really wonderful award. And I think it really sends a message to the greater public that plant content is interesting to people, that botanical knowledge is interesting to people, and, um, and that it should be considered in a more mainstream context and not just in niche audiences. So if you could go out and vote, it takes like one minute of your time. I will have links in the description below and that would be a most marvelous thing that you could do for, for me. Consider it um, a thank you for the 365 days of plants maybe um, or just all the content that's, go that's going to be coming out around the corner because we still have like really amazing content, lots of field trips, um, lots of like really fun DIY and how to and easy, easy to care, you know, plant videos coming up, um, in the, in the near future. So stay tuned here and drop your finger on that subscribe button, that like button and, um, and hit the notifications bell. If you want these coming into your email, that really does help. Again, it sends a message out to the, the greater audience and potential sponsors that this is the type of content that people really want to see. Thank you so much, guys. Looking forward to all of your information, all of your ideas, and cast your vote for the Webby Awards. All right, ta-ta for now.